I'd like to ask about the, uh, the difference between uh, the observation mission from the OSC uh, Parliamentary Assembly and the OSC ODIHR. Why are there two missions? Well, there are two missions because uh, it is very important to look into the way the campaign is run. Uh, during the campaign, you can have a lot of uh, uh, incidents which uh, may result in an election not being free and fair. For instance, if some of the candidates have practically no access to the media, if the financing system of uh, candidates is very biased in favor of some candidates, if some candidates are not allowed to organize meetings, uh, if there are candidates uh, who bribe uh, voters and so on and so on, this can of course have a very major impact on uh, the election outcome. Also, it is important to check whether the voters list is correctly established, whether the complaints are uh, taken seriously by the, by the courts that are uh, examined and so on and so on. So during the campaign it is very important for, to have people who stay three, four weeks in the country. Now, the second uh, phase, of course, of an election is the day of the election itself and the counting and tabulation of the results. And for that phase of the uh, election process, it is very important to have parliamentarians uh, assisting other short-term observers. So on the day of the election, you will have parliamentarian short-term observers, and you will have expert short-term observers, non-parliamentarians. And the two together will check whether on the day of elections everything runs smoothly. Is there ballot stuffing, uh, ballot box stuffing? Uh, are some candidates intimidated uh, before they enter or the, the polling station or during the polling station? Is the counting of the ballots correctly done after the closing of the polling station, etc.? And parliamentarians are also uh, present because they can uh, weigh the importance of the shortcomings which has been or have been uh, noted by the long-term observers and even by the technical short-term observers. Two violations might not have the same impact on the results of the election. And parliamentarians who are themselves a product of election are of course the best place to evaluate whether or not some uh, shortcomings, uh, some uh, incidents during the campaign or on the day of the election may have a real impact on, uh, on the results. Some incidents may have to be corrected but may not have impact on the results. Other incidents, which should also be corrected by the authorities, may have a very strong impact on the election outcome. And that is the role of the parliamentarians, taking into account all the observations by the Odir people and by the other short-term observers to see whether or not, considering the shortcomings, considering the positive points of the campaign and of the election day procedures, whether or not the elections are free and fair and are compatible with the Copenhagen uh, agreements, the Copenhagen principles which Armenia has accepted in 1990, and also with the principles established by the Council of Europe. How? What is the? Uh, what is the selection process of the observers, and how many observers are there in total? Well, there are 24 long-term observers. Those people are selected by Odir on the basis of their expertise. Um, Odir has a, a pool of potential candidates, people who who have already done in other countries or even in other continents uh, observations either for the OSCE or for the UN or for the European Parliament and they draw in this pool of candidates the best experts for the country where the elections are to be observed. Uh, they also appoint a head of mission who is usually uh, an experienced person who has political experience and administrative experience. In this case, a uh, lady, uh, former uh, minister of uh, Macedonia, has been uh, selected to head the observation mission, the long-term observation mission of Otir. Do these elections have greater or less importance than previous parliamentary elections in Armenia and why so? Well, I think this, import, this election has an enormous importance for Armenia because uh, Armenia is uh, 
let's say, looking more and more towards the European Union. And of course, the European Union requires all countries with which it uh, signs association agreements or other kinds of agreements to respect uh, the rule of law, to respect the principles of democracy. And of course, if uh, Armenia wants to draw more and more sympathy from the European Union and from the European people, they should, of course, Armenia should, of course, uh, move more and more towards a, an efficient and uh, good working democracy. And this includes, of course, democratic, free and fair elections. So these elections are very important for the image of Armenia in the West. The West is doing a lot to help Armenia in financial terms, but we have an enormous financial crisis in the West. And if Armenia uh, does not run uh, free and fair elections, it might be very difficult or more difficult to persuade the European uh, Union to continue supporting, as it has done in the past, Armenia. Once an observer detects a voting violation, what can he or she do about it? Well, I think, uh, of course, they have to report to the head of mission, but <coughs> what they should also do is to report to the territorial electoral commissions. And the territorial electoral commissions, they can take the measures to correct the shortcoming or if there is a judicial uh, aspect to it, they can, they can also refer the problem to the courts. Uh, that's the only way. But the uh, observers have, of course, no power to impose anything upon uh, the Central Electoral Commission or upon the Territorial Electoral Commission and even the polling stations. We should avoid giving any directions in the polling stations. If we are in a polling station, we notice a shortcoming. We have to take note of it, but we can, we can give no instruction to the head of the polling station and ask him to change or to correct uh, the shortcoming. What is your assessment of the uh, OSC interim uh, report published on the 27th of April? Uh, there have been uh, reports of alleged uh, vote buying through uh, donations. Uh, there's already been some intimidation uh, a month ago, a candidate had to pull out of the, uh, the race because he was uh, beaten and uh, intimidated and threatened. Uh, are there already indications that uh, electoral fraud can be expected? I think it is uh, not wise for me to make judgments before election day. So I will not comment upon that report. It is a partial report, it is a, not a definitive report, it indicates some shortcomings, but we should look at the picture as a whole before making statements and before making judgments on the irregularity of the elections. So I'm sorry, but I cannot make a judgment on a partial report. Uh, I have to wait for the full picture before being able to make a judgment, also taking into account the opinion of the other uh, parliamentarian observers and uh, taking into account the other facts, uh, fact findings of Odir. Assuming that uh, serious violations were found and documented in the, in the final report of the OSC, what would be the follow up process to ensure that uh, the Armenian Central Election Commission and the government will work to correct the problems so they won't be repeated in the next yeah. elections? Well, there are, of course, two kinds of shortcomings. A shortcoming can be against the law, but have no effect upon the results of the elections. Of course, this shortcoming should be corrected by the authorities and by the competent administrations. Or a shortcoming may have an impact upon the outcome of the elections, or may have as a consequence that uh, the elections are not free and fair. In both cases, these shortcomings will be noted in the final report of Odir, which will be transmitted to the authorities, and the authorities will be asked to take these fact findings into account to correct the legislation or to correct the administrative practices. 
uh, or to uh, correct the functioning of the courts in charge of, uh, of uh, examining the, the complaints and so on and so on. So all shortcomings, small or big, important or not important with respect to the results of the elections will be notified to the government and of course we hope that the government will take measures to avoid the repetition of these shortcomings in the future.